Good morning. Get started in just a second. Good morning. Sound seems to be good. No issues as far as that's concerned. You never know. Good morning. Morning. It started in just a moment. <clears throat> Morning. Good morning, Sunnyvale. Happy Friday. Uh, welcome to my weekly virtual office hours. Welcome to June. You know, this week's early artwork is from a trip that I made to Columbus last weekend. Uh, so you can see uh, it was actually pretty, pretty cute from that standpoint. Um, you know, some, some birds in a, um, some very colorful birds in a water scene. And, you know, this is the whole thing of whenever I'm visiting uh, whenever I'm visiting different cities, uh, taking a look at the art that they have. And I think, you know, art really does make a city at the end of the day, you know, and so it was good to to be in Columbus and and taking taking a look for um, for taking a look at their art and, you know, how they run their city and different things. I'll be talking about that a little bit later, um, but let's go ahead and get started. Good morning. I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Thank you for joining me again this week. You know, it's been another busy week. Uh, this is the 162nd installment of my weekly office hours. You know, I hope everyone's doing well, staying healthy, enjoying the long days. Uh, we only have a few more weeks before the days start to get shorter again. Uh, but we've now reached 1,180 days since the March, 20, March 16th, 2020 County Health Order started the shelter in place in an attempt to spread the slow attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. You know, over three years ago, I converted this weekly, my weekly coffee shop office hours into this weekly live stream address and, you know, um, try to do it every week unless there's events or traveling or, you know, or surgery, depending upon what the case is. But thanks for ev to, to everyone who's joined me over the last few years. You know, people still say they appreciate hearing from their mayor each week, whether or not they're watching it live or watching it video delayed, you know, these, these weekly addresses allow me to reach a lot more people than my in-person office hours do. You know, it was, um, and, and, and ultimately, you know, it's, it's, um, it's great because I hear back from people that, you know, they, they appreciate hearing updates, you know, um, on what's happening in the city, you know, and I, and I get to answer some of your questions and give you some general words of encouragement. So, you know, thanks for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale. Uh, let me go ahead and fix my background before we get started. Um, you know, most Fridays, um, I try to actually go, I'm still doing in-person office hours when I can. Uh, lately, it seems to be lots of, lots of meetings happening on, on Fridays. So, you know, I have an all-day, all-day event at Moffett Field at the 63rd um, Search and Rescue Command later today. 
So, you know, I don't do office hours every week, but you, you know, if you want to reserve a 15 or 30 minute time slot, you can always email me at, at counsel at larrykline.com. And you can always see my calendar at larrykline.com. And that has all, you know, all the events and when I'm actually having my, my in-person office hours. And, you know, I can always fit in a, um, a possible meeting at the coffee shop or something um, beyond that. But try to optimize my time and, and your time as far as that's current. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and talk about what's happened at the federal, state, county, and city level over the last few weeks. You know, a few Mondays ago, um, just over two weeks ago, uh, Vice President Harris was in Sunnyvale to celebrate a $4 billion CHIPS Act and semiconductor R&D investment. Um, and that's the new Applied Materials Sunnyvale location. It's being called the Epic Center, and it was a very busy day. So, you know, I met her, you know, met the VP on the tarmac with um, mayors from Mountain View, Santa Clara, as well as the director of NASA Ames. And it was, you know, wonderful to see Air Force Two land at Moffett Field. We don't get to see that that often. Um, and then I ended up rushing in the motorcade to the actual applied materials site here in Sunnyvale. And it's, you know, it's really good for to see this investment in Sunnyvale. It's really good for our future. Um, so applied materials creates the the equipment to manufacture semiconductors. And so ultimately, you know, they TSMC and lots of the international fab companies utilize their equipment and they're in their cutting edge technologies. But this R&D center will be you know, not just applied materials, but it's all their different partners. It's bringing in, you know, UC Berkeley and different different colleges from around the nation to focus on what the cutting edge next generation semiconductors look like. And, you know, for, for me, it's, you know, it's really good to see that we're putting, you know, the silicon back in Silicon Valley. And, you know, it's, you know, it's important. It's difficult to do lots of manufacturing here. But the idea is the 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 having that the right skill set and, and, and figuring out what the new semiconductors and, and chips will look, be looking like in the future. That's you know Sunnyvale is a great place for that. And once that goes in, there will be kind of a rippling effect of of partner companies that work with us, um, and we'll be working with them. And so ultimately, you look at it from that standpoint that it just it just focuses additional. Um, um, technology right here in Sunnyvale in Silicon Valley. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was that was a whole day event, um, you know, with with meeting, you know, meeting the VP on the tarmac and then the applied materials event and just just fantastic from that standpoint. Um, and then on Tuesday, that the following that following day, Tuesday council met and we first we swore in our new board and commission members. Uh, as far as the main meeting, we actually selected the preferred alignment for the Bernardo Avenue undercrossing project. And so this is a, um, a project right on the Sunnyvale Mountain View border, uh, looking to create an undercrossing uh, underneath the Caltrain tracks, underneath Central Expressway, and coming up on the other side. And so I'm right there next to Middlefield. And uh, one of the things that, that we were trying to do is trying to make sure that, you know, it's it's the right alignment, and so we chose um, a specific alignment that didn't have to move as much as much utilities. Uh, it was a little bit longer, but it also had natural light wells, and it was actually better from a staging standpoint of when construction starts. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be cost as much from that standpoint. Um, and then, so that was going forward. So now we finish, you know, finish getting those grants and, and continuing the, the final design. Now that we have the preferred uh, preferred alignment, uh, it'll take a lot of partnership with Caltrain in order to actually get this done. But but it's good to see that finally come to pass. Um, and then we also looked at approval of an installation of a of a six foot six foot wide sidewalk um, along Poplar Avenue. Uh, near near El Camino Real and Peterson Middle School, and also along um, Bryant Avenue or Bryant Way uh, near Poplar. And so this is basically doing, you know, safe routes to school efforts for the for the kids going to Peterson Middle School. And, you know, for from, you know, me, it's it's affects me directly in that, you know, that was one of the things that we had 
um, a few years ago was the students that were hit uh, in the crosswalk along El Camino and is trying to make it uh, much safer for those kids going to uh, Peterson Middle. Um, and, you know, I'm happy that I was able to work with Caltrain to, to make lots of improvements along El Camino. But now we're looking at what we can do along, you know, Sunnyvale streets to, to make sure that the rest of the way of getting to Peterson Middle School is safe. Um, you know, there weren't a lot of sidewalks in that area when, when that um, area decided to uh, move from in unincorporated Santa Clara County into Sunnyvale. The resident said, oh, we want to keep the the more, I'll say, rural feel, and we don't want to actually have um, sidewalks. And so, uh, but now, of course, 40 years later, or, or almost 50 years later, uh, it's it's the safety of the students and, and working with those residents to say, this is what, you know, this is the best thing for the community. So happy to see that we approve that. And then... Um, as far as last week is concerned, you know, last week we had the pride, pride, pride flag raising at City Hall. Um, so this was the first time uh, we raised the pride flag at our new City Hall. And, you know, in, back in June of 2019, when my first year as mayor, council approved uh, basically um, a, an ordinance or a, a just declared that that every June, we would raise the pride flag. And for the month of June, the pride flag would be displayed at City Hall. And so, you know, that following, so we we approved it on a Tuesday night about halfway through the month. And that following Wednesday morning, we, we had everybody out there um, uh, for that pride flag raising. And it was, a, it was a good event, you know, it was pre-COVID. So it was actually good to see a crowd. Um, and we've had it uh, kind of remote. Uh, we've, we've raised the flag every year since, um, although it's been kind of a smaller ceremony under COVID, uh, but, but happy that, you know, we've had, uh, we, we've now raised it at our new city hall, and there's a good number of people who showed up, um, hoping, and I decided to, that it would make more sense to move it from, you know, 8 a.m. Um, in the morning of, of, some uh, usually June 1st to an evening event. So we did it the last day of May. Um, and so it was up, and it's been up for all month, all the all June so far. So if you go by the city hall, you'll see the pride flag. And, you know, it's really important from, from a city standpoint, you know, raising the flag, the flag, you know, is a powerful statement, you know, in solidarity, um, really a declaration that, that Sunnyvale stands united as an ally with our LGBT, LGBTQ plus community. You know, there are lots of events going on um, around different cities and within our city. But but to me, I think, you know, it's it's making that statement that that we have a very diverse community, no matter, you know, what your background is, what your religion is, you know, who you love, you're welcome in our city. And so, you know, I think that's that's, you know, a really important thing for cities to be doing. And, you know, there are lots of events that you can attend this month, and we'll be talking about those a little bit later. Um, and then um, on Thursday, so that was Wednesday night, Thursday morning, um, I was up at around 2.30 in the morning to, to head uh, for a 5 a.m. flight uh, heading to Columbus, Ohio for the weekend. And so I was at the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And so this is, you know, there's to, there's a January and then there's a June meeting for the U.S. Conference of Mayors. The January meeting, which I've talked about before, uh, was at is in D.C. every year. And then the June meeting moves around to different cities. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's one of the things that that I'm happy to do to represent our city. You know, it's it's great to be there amongst all the different mayors. And, you know, since you only have one representative for each, from each city, uh, you have, you know, and, and for every city, it's like it's like you know, as much as um, there's lots of council members and other things, there's always only one mayor. And so, you know, I always like going to these sorts of conferences because for one thing, you find out about potential grant opportunities and, and, and training for city staff. And so came back with a long list of items for, for the city manager and, you know, different departments. But um, it's interesting to see how different cities are responding to issues and, you know, we all face kind of different levels, different challenges, uh, but but it's it's having that 
at that cooperative discussion, which really makes a difference. You know, one of the big issues this year was, of course, preemption from the state level and whether or not you're a, a blue city in a red state or or for us, even a blue city in a blue state. Um, the issues with uh, the state legislature, pre, pre, you know, preempting local control is a big deal. You know, it's like when when developers are allowed to not meet what the zoning requirements are for the city for the sake of, you know, their bottom line, that's where you start seeing issues in my mind. And so it was interesting to have multiple discussions on that. You know, we had, you know, discussions on the the effects of of AI and, you know, the, the effects of gun violence and, you know, uh, and so, so it's, you know, it's one of the, one of the positive things that I get to do um, just to, uh, <clears throat> just to talk about, you know, all the great things happening in our city from the CHIP Act investment to our wastewater treatment plant to our merged public safety model. It's always good to say, you know, here's what we're doing and try to get ideas, try to steal those best ideas for Sunnyvale. But that was that was all weekend long. I finally um, came back late Monday night. Um, of course, my bags didn't come back until Wednesday. Uh, but um, you know that was that's part of travel, and you know it was an exhausting few days, but a very productive few days. So so you know happy to happy to be in Columbus. Um, you know Dayton, Ohio is where I grew up, and you know the city of Riverside is where. Uh, my mom was mayor when I was a kid, when I was five years old. And so uh, it's always good to be back in that area. I don't make it back there that often. And so hadn't been to Columbus uh, probably for um, probably 40 years. So so good to good to see the city and see how it had changed. And then, of course, last weekend was the Sunnyvale Art and Wine Festival. I was really sorry to miss that kind of unofficial start to summer, but I, you know, uh, heard from a lot of people. It was a really great event, you know, with the food, the art and wine, um, lots of great performances and, and having the community partners here. I was really happy to see what Don Mayer and thanks to Don and, and the, the chamber for, for putting on a great event again this year and expanding it. You know, it's, it's kind of being reimagined post COVID and you know slowly building back uh, but i heard you know only positive things you know lots of people out there and enjoying the 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 weather which wasn't as hot this year as it was last year and just you know a great atmosphere of, of you know people being out and enjoying enjoying everything so uh, thanks to everyone who came and looking forward to next year uh, and then as far as uh, tuesday evening council met uh, we uh, the main thing we did was we reviewed the proposed fees and char um, charges for fiscal year 2023-2024, and you know this kind of approving our our fees and this goes from everything from building permits to the cost of a round of golf. Uh, it's one of the steps forward, you know, improving the next fiscal year's budget, which starts July 1st, uh, but. Ultimately, it was, you know, it was a discussion on uh, different potential fees that we might be put in that we might put in place uh, and then looking at from things from a bigger standpoint of of, you know, where we stand from a fiscal standpoint and uh, we'll be we'll be approving the budget later this month. But, you know, in general, the city's in a relatively good place. And then yesterday, um, I was actually at my last class for the Bloomberg Harvard leadership training. You know, a year ago I was chosen as a Bloom, chosen for the, the Bloomberg Harvard leadership class. And I've talked a little bit about this before, but yesterday was the final class. So I'm now an official alumni. You know, um, the, whole, the whole thing was I was chosen last year um, from mayors around the world. Um, and it was 40 mayors, 28 from the US, <clears throat> uh, 12 international. And so it started with a with four days in New York City, and it was all paid for by Bloomberg Philanthropy. Um, they're trying to improve, you know, the quality of leadership around around the country, around the world. Uh, and so it was, you know, it's good for me because you know most once you get elected, it's kind of on the job training. It's kind of you know drinking from a fire hose and dealing with whatever the latest fires are. Uh, but for me. 
uh, it was great to be chosen because you get additional training, you got additional resources for, for staff, you know, ultimately, I got to go for four, four days and, and go through classes and get to know other mayors. Um, but you know, a, a month later, the city manager and the assistant city manager went for additional training. You know, they, it's kicked off an innovation track effort with recycled water that a tiger team within the within the city have been working on for the last few months. And so it gave us additional resources. It's given us, you know, um, new ideas on how to better run a city. So it's been good from that standpoint, but it also just gave me perspective on what challenges we face here in Sunnyvale. Uh, in comparison to some of the other cities. And, you know, even, you know, there, Bloomberg is is picking some of the best cities, um, city mayors around the country to get additional training. But just looking at some of the challenges they face versus what we face, uh, it was, it, you know, it, it gave me a little perspective that Sunnyvale is in a really good place in a lot of things. So it was good from that standpoint. And then it just gave, you know, me some tools on how to be a better mayor, how the city can can take on new efforts um, and be a little more innovative, be a little more nimble, you know, how to bring in the appropriate stakeholders. So, you know, it's been really good from that standpoint. Uh, but but happy that, you know, now to be an alumni of that program and and continuing to work with Bloomberg Harvard on, you know, all the th all, you know, all the things that we're doing here in the city and getting additional resources, getting additional funding for different efforts. So happy that that moved forward. Um, as I said previously, I won't be covering covering COVID numbers anymore unless things change dramatically. You know, I continue to spend lots of time advocating on our city's behalf at the county level, at the state level, level at the federal level, you know, and of course, lots of partners. I think that was the other good thing about being at the mayor's conference, um, meeting up with potential partners for, you know, new efforts within the city uh, and getting, you know, what, what you know, we, we might be hearing a few things uh, sometime soon on potential new uh, businesses that, that might, you know, might be expanding in the city. So, you know, it's always good from that standpoint, you know, lots of good press uh, on being a safe city, being a, a friendly city, happy city. Um, but, but it's also just, you know, it's like um, seeing technology still being focused here. You know, you hear uh, from other cities in the Bay Area, the occupancy rates in different, in different office buildings and different, you know, different retail locations. And in general, Sunnyvale is in a pretty good place. Uh, let me go ahead and announce some of the upcoming events. So next Saturday, June 17th, there'll be a pet appreciation rally at Plaza del Sol from um, 1030 to 1. Uh, but go ahead and, you know, bring your pet or, you know, or not, you know, there's, there'll be lots of booths, there'll be pet demonstrations, it's kind of just a, a celebration of pets, and so uh, that'll be happening at Plaza del Sol on Saturday, um, the 17th, uh, so you can come to the farmer's market and then, you know, go downtown and uh, go down to uh, Plaza del Sol. Uh, and then next Sunday, of course, is Father's Day. So, you know, don't forget to honor that favorite father in your life. Um, and then the following Thursday, uh, June 22nd, uh, at 5 p.m. on Murphy Avenue, that'll be uh, the Pride event on Murphy Avenue. And so we've had this for, for a couple of years now, you know, Silicon Valley Pride is a co-sponsor along with, you know, the Downtown Association, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it'll be some remarks from a few of the electeds and several of our partners, and then uh, some entertainment on Murphy Avenue, which was fantastic last year. So hopefully you'll be able to attend that. And then on Friday, June 23rd, so the next morning, uh, basically two weeks from today, uh, the torch run will be going through Sunnyvale. And this is the torch run for Special Olympics. Uh, it'll be early morning again, as opposed to late afternoon, which is nice. Uh, usually, you know, for many years, it's, it was going from Santa Clara to Mountain View. So uh, public safety and I would join them uh, to, to take the torch run, usually at like two or three in the afternoon. But uh, two weeks from now, it'll be, ten, it'll be starting at 10 a.m. Uh, at Arby's, uh, right at the border 
um, with Mountain View, and then it'll be going to Santa Clara. So it'll be on the south side of El Camino, um, starting at, at um, around 10, 1030 um, on the Mountain View border, and then it will slowly move this way uh, to the, or slowly move to, slowly move east um, to where we'll meet the Santa Clara Public Safety Department um, to they will then pick up the torch and continue running it on. So uh, if you want to come out and there, it's it, it'll be if you want to bike along with all the public safety officers, if you want to run along, uh, you can join the fun. And uh, if you want to support um, Special Olympics, there's also a, a public safety Special Olympics donation page where you can also donate. So I'll, I'll be put I'll put that into uh, the chat and, and publicize that that's coming up. But always a good event and and great to support, you know, those Special Olympic athletes. And so for for me, I've been doing that for for multiple years now and happy to you know, um, go out and run with public safety and, and celebrate, you know, uh, Special Olympics. As far as upcoming council meetings, our next meeting is on Tuesday, June 20th, and that'll start with a closed session. Um, it's our half yearly review for city manager and city attorney. So that's something that, that you know, um, we do every six months or so. You know, council has two direct reports the city attorney and the city manager, and the rest of staff, the rest of the city staff are all run underneath, you know, their management. And so, you know, for, for me, it's good to give them feedback and, you know, figure out, you know, what's working, what's not working, what, you know, what they should be looking at and just kind of talk about the accomplishments over the last six months. So uh, it's good from that standpoint. Um, and then as far as the main meeting, we'll be looking at approving the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and resource allocation plan. And then on the meeting of June 27th, we'll look at, you know, approving, um, let's see. And so, yeah, so the, so the June 20th meeting is basically finalizing the budget. Um, so it's, it's, the, it's the final meeting where we approve you know, we gave certain directions um, at our all-day budget workshop, uh, and now it's coming back with that final budget plan. And then on the meeting of the 27th, uh, we'll be looking at approving the utility rate increases for fiscal year 2023-2024 for water, wastewater, and solid waste utilities uh, for, for general service for, for uh, residents and businesses throughout the city. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our weekly questions. If you have a question, just add it to the comments and I'll get to it. Melissa asks, when are you guys going to put a four-way stop on Washington Avenue in Carroll? Because of many, many accidents happen on the street because of it being a two-way stop sign, it's very concerning. So the city doesn't put up a stop sign just willy-nilly. You know, they normally go through an evaluation process um, after the residents request it. And you know, I hadn't heard of any accidents happening at that intersection. You know, I'll talk to staff, but but definitely um, those stop signs already have an indication that cross traffic doesn't stop. So so same thing at Washington, same thing at McKinley. There, you know, it's it's a feeder. So this is the whole thing of of looking at what um, what streets are meant for. So so Washington and McKinley are feeder streets from the residential areas into, um, let's say, bigger streets, Sunnyvale Avenue, Matilda, you know, going into kind of um, signalized streets. Uh, but but uh, that's one of the things of that intersection is trying to feed more, more traffic out of the neighborhoods and into downtown. Um, so uh, I'll talk to city staff, but but you know, in order for, for us to actually put in stop signs, we actually evaluate traffic and whether it's needed, whether or not there's accidents there because of that. You know, that's one of the things I, you know, that's why we have the the cross, you know, cross traffic doesn't stop uh, at McKinley and Carroll as well as uh, Washington and Carroll. Uh, several people asked, how was it meeting the VP? So um, definitely, you know, it was it was a it was an honor to be meeting her on the tarmac. Um, it, you know, she was very down to earth, you know, she talked about her history and, and love for the Bay Area, you know, she went to, uh, went to school in East Bay and actually had um, several people from, 
Uh, so lots of lots of students had come from her school, the school that she went to, uh, to meet uh, on the tarmac. So we had, you know, we had the the three mayors as well as the director of NASA Ames. We also had a good group of people that had been invited by uh, by the VP's office to meet her on the tarmac from like a, a public viewing area. So, which she actually walked over and said hi to some of them, but but actually to talk, to, to be able to talk in person with her for a few minutes, it was an honor for all the mayors and the director of NASA Ames and to hear, you know, and she, and she you know, consoled us for, you know, the, the pedestrian or the, the, um, the car fatalities that had happened on 101 here in Sunnyvale. You know, it was it was a CHP issue, but it was still here in Sunnyvale, you know, right at Fair Oaks and that had happened that same morning. And so her staff had updated her on what was happening in the Bay Area, what was happening in the cities that she's visiting. And um, was she had, you know, was very gracious as far as, you know, offering her condolences for, for those people. And, you know, it was good to hear her talk about um, how important the efforts of cities are in, in getting infrastructure done and, and the efforts for mayors and, and council members uh, over the last few years, especially under COVID, where it was never easy. Um, Susan asked, just curious, where in Sunnyvale is Applied new, new, Applied's new facility? Is it on the old AMD or national site? So no, it's um, not the old AMD site. It's the old AMD site uh, is now housing, um, although it's not complete yet, and about a six and a half acre park, but it's adjacent um, the the new applied material site, R&D site, called the Epic Center, is adjacent to their old R&D facility on Arquez. It's about halfway between, um, halfway between uh, Lawrence Expressway and Wolf Road on Arquez, uh, right near Commercial Avenue in DeGuine, uh, if you know uh, where the courtyard is, it's right around the corner from that. But you know, their old facility is about um, forty-four thousand square feet, um, and so this new facility is, I think, one hundred and eighty thousand. So it's it's about you know four times as big as their old facility, and you know it should be um, pretty impressive as far as that's concerned. Uh, Joe asked, "How big is the Applied Materials R and D lab, and how long will it take to build?" Uh, so the new Epic Center is, as I was saying, 180,000 square feet. Um, it's, you know, support for applied materials, customers, university partners, and other partner space. Uh, but it's planned to break ground the next month or two um, and then open in the first quarter of 2026, although their CEO is already saying uh, fourth quarter 2025, you know, go as fast as you can. And It'll be, we'll see how it goes, but I, you know, I think that they could actually do that. And so that would be fantastic to see. Uh, Sharon asks, Sunnyvale is happy and safe. I'm wondering though, how green we are. Uh, for example, old growth rose bushes that surrounded what's now being called the jewel on the corner of Sunnyvale Avenue and McKinley or, were replanted or simply torn up. So, you know, from a Sunnyvale standpoint, we try to be very green. You know, we have lots of rules about tree removal, but but um, bushes and plants are not really protected. And, you know, most developers are actually replacing um, ornamental or non-native plant species with native species. So it's uh, more drought resistant, you know, better, uh, easier to take care of as far as that's concerned. Um, but ultimately from, from a city standpoint, you know, uh, we don't control, let's say, uh, what the brush is to a, to a certain degree. You know, we don't allow, you know, we, we try to help them choose better when they're putting in new things. But uh, as far as like um, ornamental plants and all that, we're, we're not, you know, we're not, re, re, you know, um, keeping them from putting in something that they might want to do. So, so um, definitely um, from our standpoint, it's, it's trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, let's see. See if there are any other questions. Cynthia Robles asked, my daughter went to the Sunnyvale Police Department to file a report. They had to wait over two hours to come out and talk to her. Uh, she literally called them first and they told her that she needed to go um, 
to file the report. Um, so I don't know why she was having to wait two hours. Let me let me check with the chief. Um, but you know, definitely um, from depends on the day of the week and everything else, of course, and and what's happening within public safety. You know, most of our public safety officers are conceivably out on patrol. So, um, but I'll, I'll 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 see what I can find out as far as that's concerned. Um, don't see any other comments or questions. Um, oh wait, there was one. Allison asked, I saw a rate notice. Um, what are our rates increasing to? So so yeah, utility costs are completely based upon um, actual use and subscription levels. So the city is proposing increases of 4% for water. 9% for wastewater and 6% for solid waste. So, um, and all this has to do with, it's the cost of doing business. As the city doesn't make any money on utilities. It's the cost of operations and delivery of that service. So it's it's a certain amount of staffing, but it's the infrastructure, paying for the infrastructure. And then if it's um, like water, um, we get our water from two different sources, the, the San Francisco PUC, SFPUC and Valley Water. And, you know, they raise their own rates. So part of that is pass-through cost. You know, Valley Water is actually proposing to increase water rates this year by 14.5% for the next two years. Uh, and, you know, um, so we use reserves and we try to make sure that, that we don't burden our customers as much as we can. Uh, so, you know, water on average for a single family, uh, water will go up $2.77. Wastewater will go up $5.15 and solid waste and recycling will go up $2.53 a month. So about $10.45 a month um, for all those services, for all those different rates um, uh, total on a, for an average uh, single family resident. So, you know, from, from that standpoint, you know, it's, it's um, I think San Jose just raised their water rates by, <clears throat> I think 10% or 10.5% for, for some of their residents. And so we try to keep the burden as little as possible and utilize reserves for, you know, water main breaks and things of it, that, that nature to fix spot, you know, uh, infrastructure issues. But then it's also trying to make sure that those rates um, stay low for our residents. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, so thanks for joining me again this week. You know, um, we live in interesting times. You know, new things are coming up almost every day, but I want you to know that no matter what challenges we face, we face them together. I'm proud of Sunnyvale and how our residents, you know, have responded during COVID, but, but as well as just um, on a daily basis. You know, I, I, I people are willing to help out, show their generosity, show their kindness in our community. And I, I really appreciate that. Your actions and your attitude really do make a difference. It's why we are, um, why we were declared the, the happiest city in the U.S. Um, in December. But Sunnyvale will emerge from this as a stronger community. We're in this together and we will get through this together. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.